Hey guys, hoping all is well with everyone. So in this video today for our question of the day, we're going to be looking at a very common uh, standardized test or final examination algebra one question that can really cause a lot of students some points off or incorrect responses. And the reason that it does that is because the student will use one factoring method type and then it'll be correctly factored in that way and they'll see a possible answer choice relative to what they got after the first factoring method type. And then they'll choose that without glancing by the fact that they had the opportunity to uh, factor the expression even further. So we're going to be looking at that today. And our expression that we're going to be looking at is 3t cubed minus 27t. So the approach that we're going to take here is to first use the greatest common factor uh, method of factoring to simplify and take out the greatest common factor between 3t cubed and 27t. Now, one of the things I always tell my students when it comes to greatest common factoring is start with the coefficients and determine their greatest common factor, then determine if there's any variable based greatest common factor. The reason I like to break it up is even though this one doesn't seem too bad because it's just a single variable and other components of the fact that the greatest common factor is not too bad is as you go further and more complex expressions and polynomials with uh, multiple variables things are going to get a lot more um, difficult and challenging very quickly if you try to do it all in one shot determining the greatest common factor so step one is going to be determine the GCF of the coefficients okay. So the way to do that is a long while back when we started learning about factoring, one of the first methods you probably learned um, is prime factorization. Some of us call it the ladder method, some of us call it the factor trees, but basically you can look at each coefficient and determine the composition or um, structure of it based on its prime factors. Now prime um, three is already a prime factor, its only factors are itself and one. So that's all good to go. And then we have 27 which will kind of break down into its components and it's going to be the composition of 3 cubed or 3 oops, three times 9 which is 3 times 3 times 3. So then when we look at this, we have that the only, uh, the greatest common factor that they have is going to be 3 as it is a factor that is represented in both the factor tree or ladder method um, diagram and model. So now we have our coefficient greatest common factor being 3. So step 2 is going to be determine the GCF of the of the variables so in this case we only have one variable but going forward you may see multiple um, variables in your expression so for this one um, what we're going to do here is analyze remember we can only take out the number or letter of number of t's that is minimal in any number of terms. So in the first expression, or in the first term of the expression, we have t cubed, or t times t times t, or three t's. In 27t, we only have one. So the maximum that I can factor out is going to be one t. So that's going to be my greatest common factor in terms of the variables. So. So step three is going to be to factor out the greatest common factor of the from the expression. Let me do it up here. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to take 3t as my greatest common factor. And then remember, factoring is like division. So it's the inverse or opposite operation of the distributive property. So if I took a 3t from 3t cubed, all that I have left is t squared. And then if I take out a 3t from 27t, I'm going to have 9 left over. Now again, this is where a lot of students are going to lose points because they'll see that as a possible option in their answer pools and they'll glance by the fact that t squared minus 9 is still factorable. So what makes t squared minus 9 a very unique expression is that it's a difference of squares binomial. So it has a very unique and special type of factoring. So remember that with a difference of squares we have that generalized formula. So step 4 is going to be use the So use the generalized formula of a difference of squares to factor the remaining expression after factoring out the greatest common factor. So for a difference of squares, I'll kind of do it over here. Is if you have a expression of the terms a squared minus b squared its factoring method is going to be a plus b a minus b now remember a and b are just the square roots of the terms of your binomial expression so a is just going to be the square root of your first term and b is going to be the square root of your second now here we're going to be using the positive uh, aspects of those roots because remember when we take the square root of something we attribute to its plus and minus but in this case we're just going to be using the positive roots so for t squared it's going to just be t because the square root of t squared the squaring on the t and the square root will cancel, just giving us t. And then the square root of 9, the positive root is 3. So what we'll do here is model the situation above with our actual. So if a squared is equal to t squared, then a is just equal to t, and then b squared is just equal to 9, then b is equal to 3. So to put that into our formula, we have t plus 3, t minus 3. Okay, so now we have fully factored this expression, but what we have to keep in mind is for step number five that we're going to put all of the parts back together. So step five is to rewrite the, rewrite the factored form putting together both the GCF and difference of 
squares factoring methods. So what that's going to lead us to is that our final expression is going to be the greatest common factor, which was 3t. And then our difference of squares factoring is going to be t plus 3 t minus 3. Now remember, when you have this fully factored expression, and before you submit that as a final answer, remember you have the opportunity to check your answer. What you can do here is go ahead and use the FOIL method of your um, difference of squares factors and then after you use the FOIL method to get that expression you can distribute in the 3t. So let's go ahead and do that as step 6. So what we'll do here is we use the FOIL method, and I'm actually going to use it down here. Um, so remember, first outer and our last, you have t squared, so t times t. Outer is going to be minus 3t. Inner is going to be plus 3t. And then last is going to be oops, last will be minus 9 so remember what's the unique um, characteristics of a difference of squares is that the outer and inner terms are going to cancel so this is just going to give us t squared minus 9 now, I would recommend simplifying that before you use your distribution of your greatest common factor. Just makes things a little easier. So then the next step would be going ahead and distributing 3t into t squared minus 9, which in doing so gives us 3t cubed. And then 9 times 3t is 27t. So we do show that our factoring method was not only completed, but we also have us showing that it is correct by getting back to the original expression we started with. So the final answer is going to be that your fully factored expression will be 3t times the quantities t plus 3 t minus 3 okay. all right guys I hope this helps you guys out if you guys have any questions or any requests for any problems I'd be more than happy to answer them for you um, again, as you guys are preparing for your final exams, I hope you guys are trying to relax and not stress too much about it. But if you have any requests or anything, um, please don't hesitate to message me. But as always, guys, please take good care and be safe. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye.